Is this too close? I feel like I'm really closer. Like I can literally touch the camera. I usually can't touch the camera when I'm over there, but I'm over here today. I just, I felt, felt like getting crazy, but I am gonna back up a little bit so that I'm not like right up in your grill. <laughs> What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon, welcome to my studio. This is where I do food photography. So if you are into that, you go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And today we are talking all about tethered capture and the ability to connect your camera to your laptop or your computer so that you can capture the images, you can get a live view sense of what is going on in the scene that you've set up, transfer those files into your computer and start processing right away. So if that sounds exciting to you, if that is something you wanna learn more about, well, you're you're in the right place and you stick around. Now before I jump into the tutorial, I am super excited to share with you that today's video is actually sponsored, which hopefully you're excited about this too, because that means there's money coming into the bite shop, which is helpful to me in order to continue to create great videos just like this one for you here on the bite shop. So with that, today we are sponsored by Portfolio Box. If you have been dreaming of your own food photography business, well then clearly you need a website and an online portfolio and a great way to do that is over at Portfolio Box. It's an online website builder tool created specifically for photographers, designers, artists, other creative professionals. So if you need to get an online portfolio up and running in literally a matter of hours that is sleek, professional, and eye-catching, and also used by over 740,000 creatives worldwide. I mean, if that's not a hearty endorsement, I don't know what is. And the best part about Portfolio Box is that it is super user-friendly and it doesn't require any coding knowledge. Their free plan includes hosting of 50 images, 10 products, 10 pages, and all of their amazing template designs. So to try it out, go to the link in the description box below, and that also gets you a special Bite Shot discount of 20% off their pro version through December 31st, 2018. You can get designing today, create that beautiful website, create that beautiful dream that you've had going in your mind. Start that business today over at Portfolio Box. So I think about all the things that I've learned as a photographer over time, and one of the major game changers was certainly shooting tethered, like literally revolutionized things for me, not only for the ability to sort of separate from that little LCD screen that's on the back of the camera, right, that you're relying on in order to see, is that in focus? Wait a minute, what's going on there, right? That you have all of your scene blown up onto either your laptop or onto some sort of monitor so you can really get a sense of what's going on what's in focus make sure you've completely nailed that image before you even get into the editing process but almost more than that what I really love about tethered capture is how it has simplified and streamlined my entire process of going from shoot to making sure that those files have transferred into my computer getting them those into Lightroom and then the ability to process that literally we're taking steps out of that entire equation to make everything so much quicker. I swear, it's a huge time savings. If you are not already doing it, this is gonna like, poof blow your mind. So in terms of gear, what you're gonna need are four different things in order to connect your camera to your laptop or your computer. And so first, of course, you're gonna need some sort of camera that is capable of connecting to your laptop or to your computer. And usually most up-to-date cameras that have been purchased within the last couple of years will be able to do that. Most likely you'll know because it came with a USB connector cable. If you have that, then you're good to go and you should be able to just pop it right into that USB slot, throw it into the camera and get yourself right rocking and rolling. But if you don't have that connector cable, you can always hop online, Google the make and model of your camera and see if there is a connector cable available, or at least find out if there's more information about does this camera actually connect up for tethering purposes. Now, in addition to that USB connector cable, I also recommend a USB extension cord cable. So this is going to extend that connector cable that like for me, I've got the Canon 70D, the 5D Mark IV, they both came with their own USB connector cable meant for tethering, but it's just not a super long cord. And so I want a lot of flexibility in the studio. I want room to move around. So an extension cord, really helpful piece of equipment. I've actually got one linked down in the description box below, should work with any USB connection. Then of course, you're gonna want some sort of device, whether that be a computer or laptop. And then when I'm shooting tethered, 99.9% .9 of the time, I am also shooting either on a tripod or on my C-stand. So that 
is ensuring that I have got that camera anchored in a single position so that then I can be more focused on moving things around in the scene, setting my composition, checking on the computer, have I got things where I want it, and taking the shots, as opposed to monkeying around with holding a camera. Now, one thing that I did forget to mention that I think is important to just bear in mind is that if your camera has the ability to connect wirelessly, you may not want to do that because a wireless connection is a lot more finicky. I have found that anytime I have tried to connect wirelessly from my camera to maybe a cell phone or to a laptop, it has a hard time holding that connection, especially if I'm here at home where we've got our internet going, you've got a lot of interference, so that's not gonna make for a really solid connection. And two, there's a lot of delay just in terms of file transfer. If you are trying to transfer those raw images from your camera through a wireless connection, it may take a while. And so for me, I like some speed, and so that's why I use the USB cord. So then the question is, well then what software do you use? And a lot of professionals out there, a lot of professional studios will use Capture One, which actually you can download a free 30-day trial of, test it out for yourself, play with it. It definitely is a great software. It enables you to both have a live view mode so that you can have your camera mounted in whatever position and see live view without taking a shot what is going on in that scene. But then you also have photo processing abilities in that. So similar to Lightroom or Photoshop, the ability to edit that image, make adjustments and process raw files. But for me, I was kind of like, well, you know, one additional software that I have to pay for and one additional software that that I have to keep up to date with and learn. I don't know, it just, it was too many softwares. Like I kind of drew the line and I said, let's use what I've got. There's gotta be something in the tools that I already have that will make all of this happen. And sure enough, within Lightroom, there is something called the auto import feature. And that is how I make this whole tethering thing work without having to add additional software. It streamlines the whole process. Let me show you how it works. So for this setup, I have my Canon 5D Mark IV mounted to my C-stand so that it is in that fixed overhead position just to make doing the whole flat lay thing a whole lot easier and then I have that USB connector cable inserted into the side of the camera and then I've got that USB connector cable then connected to the USB extension cord cable which is then plugged into my MacBook Pro. Now once you get onto the computer you want to make sure you have the software that you get from the manufacturer whether that came with your camera on maybe like a CD or you download that off of the manufacturer's website you want to make sure you have that software on your computer up and running so that when you turn on the camera theoretically if you've done everything correctly the computer should be able to recognize it it will launch the software it will get connected and you will literally at that moment be tethered now if you have everything connected and the camera is on and it's connected and you have the software and it's not working definitely check the documentation on the manufacturer's website there are some finicky little things related to tethering depending on your specific camera like maybe depending on if it doesn't have a memory card in it it won't connect there's just some funky little things so definitely check the documentation. But once you've got all that figured out, you've got it up and running, you should have some sort of interface which allows you to see all of the current settings of the camera, be able to change those. You should be able to launch the live view mode so that you can see exactly what's happening in your scene. You should be able to adjust your autofocus if you're using that. And then you should also be able to release the shutter button and take a picture. And so that is basic tethering right there. But my problem then was I then wanted wanted it to automatically be in Lightroom so that then I could also just make some quick adjustments just to make sure I've got the exact image I want so that when I get into editing, I don't have this desire to go reshoot the images again, that I know that in that shoot, I got exactly what I wanted and needed. So how do we do that? Well, we wanna make sure that we know exactly where all of these images are going so we can tell Lightroom, hey, any images that end up in this folder right here, automatically import those into Lightroom. Yes, there's a way to do this, let me show you. So here in the Canon EOS utility, again, depending on your software, you should be able to designate any images that are shot through the tethered capture, you should be able to decide exactly where those go. So for me, what I do is I create a folder on my desktop called tethered capture. Now the images are not ultimately going to live there, that's just gonna be sort of like a little temporary holding place before Lightroom comes in and grabs them from there. So I call that tethered capture I make sure that the software knows to send all of the images there and then we are good to go in this software now it's time to jump over into Lightroom so over in Lightroom if you go up to file instead of going down to tethered capture you want to go down to the auto import feature
And before we hit enable auto import, let's go ahead and go into auto import settings. Now this menu of settings, what we're effectively doing is telling Lightroom to watch the folder that we just created on the desktop and anytime a file ends up in there to grab it, transfer it into Lightroom so we can start editing and then also move it to whatever its final destination is, whatever your file system is, to put it where it's ultimately supposed to go. So what I wanna start off with is enable auto import. And then as far as that watched folder, we want it to watch that folder that we created on the desktop, right? So anything that ends up in that tethered capture folder will automatically be imported into Lightroom. Pretty cool, right? So then in this case, this is very specific to this shoot. You'll have to do this every time you do a new shoot. What we want it to do is move it to a specific destination. So in this case, for this example, I wanna go ahead and move it to my terabyte drive, throw it in the picture subfolder into tethered capture. There we go. And then what I wanna do is create a subfolder that is going to be named whatever we're gonna name that folder, right? So in this case, this shoot is the cucumber salad shoot. Maybe you would name it the name of the client, whatever that subfolder name is of the shoot you're doing, that's what you're gonna wanna put there. And then in terms of the file naming, again, this is specific to you, how you organize your files. When I'm doing recipes, just for SEO purposes, I use a custom name based on the name of the recipe. So I'm gonna use custom name, and I'm gonna, again, use cucumber salad. You could name it whatever you want, whatever your naming conventions are. And then in terms of this additional information, I'm not gonna use any additional filters or develop settings. I'm gonna keep things pretty basic at this point, but I do wanna make sure to embed my metadata. Now, if you don't know about metadata, you definitely need to go down to the description box below and grab this video that I've got linked from Flurn. He's got a really helpful tutorial all about how to make sure your metadata is stored in the image file. This is huge for copyright. This will ensure that your images are safe and nobody will be ripping them off. It's not about watermarking. It's really about embedding your own personal copyright into that image file. So I'm putting my Joni Simon Media metadata there. All right, and then I've got this enabled, so I go ahead and hit OK. So now that is the hard part. That is all of the complicated stuff in getting it set up. And hopefully you are still with me. If you're not, there's always the comment section below. But now what we can do is go ahead and go back to our tethered capture in the EOS utility or whatever software it is that you're using to connect to your camera. Go ahead and make sure everything's lined up and looks good. Fire the shutter. And then what we will be able to see is go open to that tethered capture folder. You'll see that the file goes in there, but suddenly it disappears because what happened is Lightroom grabbed it. So if we jump over to Lightroom and we look at this little folder where it's the cucumber salad and all of a sudden you see there is that image and we are ready to edit. It looks good. We've got the image we want. We just saved a ton of time and that file is living in its permanent home. We can export the files. Everything is where it should be. The process is so much simpler. We don't have to monkey around with pulling memory cards out of cameras, checking it, transferring them, waiting for them to transfer. It's all done right there. And so that's how I handle tethered capture here in the studio. Hopefully this has given you some fun ideas. Hopefully you've learned a thing or two. Certainly if you have any questions, you've got the comment section below. And of course, if you take any images with any of these tools or tips or tricks, feel free to tag me over on Instagram. Love to see your shots. I'm at the bite shot. I will give you those two thumbs up. But with that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you stay out of trouble and I'll see you soon. Okay. Bye. How was school today? Good. Yeah? What'd you learn? Um, I don't know. Mm. Why are there only orange and brown M&M's? No, orange and black. Oh. How do we say bye-bye in Spanish? Um, I don't know. Adios. Adios. <laughs> you know how to say it in Italian? No. Arrivederci. <laughs> can you say that? <laughs> I can't. You can. Arrivederci. Close, very close, high five.